Good morning. I'm stalling. I'm stalling because there's so many people walking around still, but there. <laughs> there we go. Well, good morning. It is certainly good to see everyone this morning. And if you are a visitor, especially welcome to the service. And uh, it is raining yet again. <laughs> I'm from central Indiana, so we had a lot of farm families in the church I came from, and, and we used to thank the Lord for rain in the spring. But uh, I think at this point, uh, we, need to, <laughs> we need to pray that, uh, you know, we've had enough, Lord, so uh, let's bring the sun out and, and let the, no, we, we thank the Lord for everything. And, uh, but it is a rainy weekend, my goodness. We are ready for it, I think, to, to get a little sunny out there. But today is also Father's Day. Fathers, congratulations for being fathers. <laughs> this is the day that I get to sit on the sofa all afternoon and watch TV. My family's like, what's, what's the difference? Uh, <laughs> sounds like something you do about every Sunday. But no, fathers... Uh, we are. We, we especially want to extend our appreciation to you today, and uh, I think our world takes fatherhood a little bit for granted, and uh, and so you know we we just thank the Lord for the way that He helps us fathers to uh, guide our families in the ways of the ways of the Lord and to teach our kids. And uh, we really rely on the Lord in, in, in that way. So thank you, fathers. And because of Father's Day, there are no evening uh, groups meeting tonight. So just remember that everything this evening is canceled so that our families can spend time together. And then also coming up uh, this week, it also affects Wednesday night groups, is Mount of Praise. Mount of Praise camp meeting down at Ohio Christian University starts uh, on Tuesday, and so I, I encourage you to uh, go to one of the evening services down there sometime between Tuesday and Sunday. Um, it, it is a very, very neat uh, time together as the uh, 3CU denomination and to hear some wonderful speakers and just a fellowship together down at Ohio Christian University. And then also this week, uh, it also happens the same time as Mount of Praise as Teens of Praise. So we appreciate your prayers for our teens. We're taking a real good group down this year to Teens of Praise, and, and I direct that camp, so I also appreciate uh, and covet your prayers uh, this week as, as me and, and the helpers and all the counselors, you know, we do our thing down there. And I also want to just say thank you. I'm very grateful for all the donations that uh, you gave to help our teens attend. Uh, every one of our teens uh, was able to receive the, uh, the amount that, that I was asking for, so thank you. And we actually had more come in, quite a bit more, and like I told you a couple weeks ago, we're just going to, uh, the donations that, that have run over what we needed for camp, and then everything that comes in uh, from now on until July 31st, we're gonna put towards the teens who are attending the Caribbean Region 3CU camp. This is the first year that we are taking some uh, teens from the state side down to our Caribbean Region youth camp that happens every two years. And so myself, Rachel, Amy Lawler, and three of our teens are attending with some others who are going, and that's quite an expense. It's actually around $1,000 a person. Um, flights down there are astronomical. So we are now collecting funds and, and receiving donations to help offset the cost of that. So thank you very much. VBS is coming up, and of course, Lauren, I looked at the board out there this morning. There are quite a few slots that have no names beside them. So pray about that. Think about if you can help with VBS week coming up. And let's see, what else do we have? Uh, pray for Jonathan, Pastor Jonathan and his family. They are on vacation today and where's pastor mike <laughs> pastor mike and i for about five six seven minutes the other day we sat around talking about what could we do this morning on the platform because we know he's probably watching live stream in fact we know he is 
He told us he was. I'm not sure why he told us. Actually, I know why he told us. But we, we thought about what we could do up here so that he could view it remotely and be able to do nothing about. <laughs> but, but we were so busy and exhausted this week that we didn't get anywhere with it. And plus, we wanted to keep our jobs. So not, I don't know if you have anything planned, but I got nothing, Mike. But we want to pray for Jonathan. He needs a vacation right? If you spend time with that man, uh, like we do, you know that he, he needed a vacation, and we are glad that he is taking it. And in his stead, Dr. David Case is going to be speaking to us today, and I think we all know Dr. David Case. In closing, uh, before we pray together, I just want to mention one more uh, uh, very neat thing that's been happening around here the last couple weeks. Uh, Charles Shoup, and we're going to give Charles the mic in a minute because he is, he is uh, uh, asked to just say a word of appreciation to our church. But if you're a Wednesday night attender, you know Charles well. Charles is our neighbor, and he's walked over for a couple years to attend the Wednesday night um, program we have here. And, and Charles is suffering with uh, cancer, and he spent quite a few weeks in uh, rehab and, uh, and he is now on hospice. And for him to receive in-home hospice care, uh, there was lots of repairs and cleaning and things that needed to be done to his house next door to the church for him to be able to return there. And, uh, and we got wind of that, and Pastor Jonathan organized quite a crew of people. And for two weeks, uh, we've been in the house preparing it uh, so that Charles would be able to return to his home, which was very important to us and especially important to Charles. And so first of all, I'm sure Charles is going to as well, but I want to thank all those who put many, many hours in uh, over there. And Charles returned yesterday. So Charles, hold the mic up so we can hear you. He's going to just say a word. Why can you hear? Oh, yeah, you can hear me. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I want to thank this church. Oh, God, what a wonderful church family you people are. You, you've been wonderful people, and, and, uh, and you people have done a wonderful job. I, I couldn't believe how, how wonderful it seems. And the Parkwood Forest, I haven't seen them since I was a little kid. I was real little. I was probably about six or seven years old because it's had carpet on it since the late 60s. But I want to thank you for all you've done for me and, and this church. And, and uh, I know I was supposed to go to carriage court, but they, they became a, a, a problem because I fell through. And Ron told me here, this Ron, he's my great friend. He's my, he's uh he goes to the other church that I go to. I go to a lot of churches. I go to a lot of churches, and I like to spread the word of the Lord around. But he came in, and I seemed he was flustered. And, uh-oh, lost my packing. But uh, he was so flustered. I said, what's wrong, Ron? He said, I just got off the phone with carriage court, and uh, they won't let you in because of this. And I said, well, what we're going to, you know, I, I don't know what to do. And, and I said, I said, Ron, let's call Jonathan. And, uh, and, and Ron said, said uh, Charles, whatever, Ron, whatever Jonathan says, uh, if, if, you know, whatever he says, you're going to be different with the Lord. And I said, absolutely not. Because remember this, people, the Lord takes care of his children. And I'm his child. Remember, the father has no grandchildren. We're all his children. And, and I talked to Jonathan. I said, well, we're between the rock and rock. I don't have no place to go. I couldn't go back to the house the way the condition of the house was. And, uh, and, and Johnson says, 
it's all right. And she says, I've been thinking about a plan. And uh, we got a plan go on, go on. And we're going to get one started. And I said, bless you, uh, Jonathan. And, and I said, well, God takes care of his, his children, doesn't he? He said, absolutely. And uh, I said, can you talk to Ron? And, and Ron, uh, I seen the relief when, when uh, Jonathan talked to him. And other things I want to say, this church has been so good to me. Even several years late, you know, ago, uh, when I lost my job, and I talked to Aaron, and, and I, I, I'm a person, it, it doesn't go, go out and, you know, I had bills coming in, and, and I, you know, money was going down. I don't point around now and all that. And this church came through for me. And I didn't, wasn't going to this church. But being a neighbor and saying, well, let's allow the church what, what we were supposed to do. And that's what Aaron, I think that's what Aaron said. And I said, yeah, that's right. But what you guys have done, that, that really shows the, the purity of love that you've done for me. And another thing I've been saying, and, uh, and I said to Jonathan, I, I, want, I want to meet people. If there's anybody here that doesn't know the Lord, uh, talk to someone or even talk to me. Because I, I, uh, I, I thought I was okay for years and years until I talked to Jim Derry and, uh, and he asked me if, uh, how, uh, how, you know, are you saved, Charles? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, explain to me how you're saved. And I explained to him, I said, well, I'm a good person, and, and uh, I believe in the Lord, and you confess your sins. And he said, what else? Well, I think that's about it. He said, no, Charles. No, there's more to it. There's more. You got a, the baptism, and, uh, and uh, the old man has to die inside of me. And, uh, and uh, I, learned, I did Bible study with him, and I did that for, uh, for a while until uh, Jim Derry was telling me, and said, when are you going to get baptized? I said, well, I'll think about it. He said, well, we need to do this. And, and we went ahead and did it. And that was on September the 17th, 2015. I confessed to my Lord, I give you up to my my Lord, and uh, and I went under the water. It was over there uh, uh, all day in the church. I want to say one thing. When you get baptized, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> because that chlorine water does not taste very good. And I was coming up choking, and Jeff and Jim were saying, we got you baptized. We don't want you to die yet. And uh, I said, no, I'll be all right. But it is a wonderful experience thing because I had my eyes open. And to see, and it had a, like a, uh, the roof like it was open, like, you know, like a, what is it that they have the cars? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? But you could see the, 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 the skylight. They had one of the skylights. And I could see it, and, and, but it was so beautiful. And, uh, and, and it was so, so wonderful for that. But, but people, anybody here today, just think of, uh, read your Bible. The scriptures are there. Prayer does work. But the scriptures, the power of the Lord, his words are there. And they will give you the answer. It will not fail you. It might not what you want to hear, but the Lord is, is, is telling you what you need. And then remember this. The time, uh, the Lord has no time. And, and we have the time, but, uh, but uh, he has no time. But I... When my, I just want to save souls on this earth, and I pledge that to the Lord. And, uh, and when, whatever the, my life is expected, whatever it is, but when it's over, 
I, I know where I'll be. I'll be there and really see Jesus and really to see him. It's a wonderful thing that we'll all experience. Like we have that, we have that time that we're all, have that time that's set for every one of us. And, uh, and we all, uh, the Lord knows what that is, but we don't. And, and, uh, and we have our clothes now. But uh, thank you all for all you've done for me. And, and thank you again. And, and come and visit. I'm, I'm proud of how the, the house looks. And like I said, thank you again. Thank you, Charlie. Let's, let's pray as we prepare our hearts for worship. Dear Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. Lord, we know there are lots of other places and things that we could be doing. Lord, Sunday is, is a special day, but it's also a day that, uh, that other things are happening in our world uh, that are not of you. And Lord, we just pray in the coming days and weeks and months that uh, we see a revival in the life of the church worldwide. Lord, that, um, that you will help your people to really live out in a daily, tangible way your love, Lord, and, and uh, may there be evidence in all of our lives that there is something different at work, that people would look at us and, and wonder what's happening, the supernatural that, that, uh, that is going on in the, the life of the church and, and, uh, and, and question what that is and be drawn to it. And Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for those who are about to lead us into your presence and song, and we pray that you would just use them in a special way. And then Dr. David Case, as he comes up and delivers the word to us, Lord, may you just use him as a, a messenger for what you want to individually tailor to our hearts uh, this morning. And we thank you for those who have been busy doing your work in the life of the church. Lord, those who have been helping kids at kids camp, those who are going to be going to teen camp next week to assist, those who have been helping neighbors the past couple weeks and working in the church and, and those who have been doing evangelism outside of the church. Lord, we just, we just really thank you for the ways that you're using faith these days. And we just pray uh, for John, Pastor Jonathan and his family this week, Lord, as they just spend some time together and get renewed and refreshed. And now, Lord, we just give the rest of this time over to you to do with as you, as you want. And we pray that hearts are open in Christ's name. Amen. Stand with us as we worship this morning.
Father loves us so much. He's our creator, our master. He loves us no matter what, through every blessing that we have. Let's worship him today. Asking the ushers to come forward now as we continue our worship experience by way of our gifts, our tithes and offerings. Isn't it wonderful to be a cheerful giver unto the Lord? Makes a difference, folks. Smile as you give that gift today for all that he has given you in your life. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, it is a privilege to call you Father, Father God, on this Father's Day. And we are your children. We thank you, Father, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And Lord, we think of our families today. We think of earthly fathers. And Lord, I think of my own, that you have blessed me all my life, who has gone on to be with you forever six months ago. Lord, thank you for our heritage of faith. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this offering that is about to be received, and may it be used in great ways to carry the work that you've called us to do. And be with Dr. Case as he brings the good news of your word. 
Give him a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. And we pray that you have been with us in a special way. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you here this morning. And uh, glad that we can worship together. Before we read the scripture lesson and um, share some thoughts together, Gladys Lawrence has asked to be anointed in prayer for two other individuals, one of them in uh, faraway New Guinea. And so I'm going to invite Gladys Lawrence to the altar. Um, our elders gather around her and other friends who would like to join her. Please gather at the altar.
Shall we pray? Gladys, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the morning, as your faith reaches out to others, even to far away New Guinea. For your your healing for all that you you look down in Gladys's faith that reaches out to the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11. We're going to read a very familiar passage of scripture. Luke's version of what has become known as our Lord's Prayer. Luke's gospel chapter 11. Verse 1, it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, Say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. This is Luke's version of what has become known as the Lord's Prayer. It's also found in Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, chapter 6. Some would be a little more specific and say that our Lord's Prayer is uh, probably his high priestly prayer in John's Gospel, chapter 17, to distinguish it from what we've read here, often referred to as the model prayer. Notice how it even came into being. Notice the context. Jesus was a man of prayer. He prayed frequently. Early in the morning, while others are still slumbering, he would be awake, 
go up into the mountains and pray. He would pray during the day. He would conclude days while others had slumbered off to their night of rest. He would be spending time in prayer. Jesus was a man of prayer. It would, um, it would be uh, interesting to hear him pray. It would be um, a uh, example to follow to see how earnest he was in prayer. It would be a uh, challenge to us to see how frequently he prayed. His prayer life caught the attention of his disciples. And it happened. On one such occasion, when he had concluded praying, that his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, prayer um, was, was not just something new with Jesus during his earthly time with us. Judaism was a religion of prayer. Disciples, teachers, would be men of prayer. And cousin John the baptizer, who had gathered some disciples around him, was a man of prayer. And he apparently gave his followers a certain prayer to pray. It was a prayer common to John the baptizer and his disciples. It was a prayer that identified them as a follower of John. It was a prayer that uh, consolidated their faith, that brought them together, that uh, gave them a certain peace and a certain harmony as followers of John. We have no idea what that prayer was. It's been lost in history. But Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples to pray. And the disciples of Jesus were asking for a similar prayer, a special prayer, a prayer that they could pray together, a prayer that would identify them as followers of Jesus of Nazareth a prayer that would be their own special prayer. Today, in um, various services, not only here in America, but around the world, what is called the Lord's Prayer will play an important part in the worship of many people. The disciples would be quite, quite amazed to find that people are still praying this prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Now, um, the prayer is too involved to tackle in one sermon. I just want you to notice how it begins. Father, Father. Now that may not shock you to begin a prayer, Father, but 
in Jesus tongue Galilean Aramaic his word would have been Abba Abba a term known to everyone a term used as endearment to one's earthly father we might say papa dad now now we're 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 not just talking baby talk dada something like that we're talking about a term of endearment papa dad but it's at the most personal level it's at a very intimate personal level jesus said when you pray say abba papa dad it's a word that uh, would shock the Jewish world of Jesus day and probably still today um, the Jewish people with great reverence for Jehovah God as they begin their prayers um, they would never think of starting it with Papa dad um, they prayed morning afternoon evenings some of the most uh, frequent prayers of Jesus day have been called the 18 benedictions a prayer that would be prayed daily but it would conclude with appropriate names for their God in what is presumably its earliest form the first benediction prayer benediction reads as follows blessed art thou Yahweh God of Abraham God of Isaac God of Jacob the most high God master of heaven and earth our shield and the shield of our fathers blessed art thou Yahweh the shield of Abraham great terms lofty terms respectful terms addressing the God of this universe but not Abba Papa dad not folksy intimate terms like Abba Jesus is going to end his life being crucified between two thieves part of his crime is going to be the charge of blasphemy he not only claims to be God he not only claims to forgive sin but when he talks about Jehovah God he uses such folksy commonplace terms like Papa dad he's a blasphemer he deserves to be crucified now either one of two things 
either Jesus is guilty of blasphemy, either he is taking the most reverent individual in heaven, Jehovah God, and bringing him down to a common folk-like papa, dad, or he is simply telling the truth. That's the kind of relationship that I have with Jehovah God. When I pray, I simply bow my head and say, Papa, Dad. And when Jesus of Nazareth bows his head and says, Abba, he is in touch with the God of this universe. Either he is guilty of blasphemy or he's bearing simple testimony to the relationship that exists between Jehovah God and Jesus of Nazareth. When you pray, say, Abba. Now the only way 12 grown men that later New Testament scripture is going to declare ignorant and unlearned men. The only way 12 grown men can address the God of this universe, Papa, Dad, is because of their special relationship to Jesus of Nazareth. If you have a personal relationship with me, Jesus said, you can pray to the God of this universe as I do. Now, this is not the first instance of disciples receiving a special benefit because of their relationship with Jesus of Nazareth. John's Gospel, chapter 2, tells us about a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Now, the wedding in a good Jewish home uh, lasted more than a couple hours. It lasted more than a couple days. It could last a week. And the parents of the bride are not scurrying around trying to attend to the needs of the guests, they are enjoying the wedding festivities with everyone else. They bring someone else in to attend to the needs of the wedding party. Wedding at Cana of Galilee. The mother of Jesus was brought in. In case there is heavy lifting to do, she brought her son, Jesus. Now, unbeknownst to those who uh, were setting up the wedding, when you invite Jesus of Nazareth to a wedding, 12 grown men are going to follow. No wonder they ran out of wine. They did. That's the story. They run out of wine. But 12 grown men attended a wedding in Cana, not because they knew 
the intended bride and groom, not because they were part of the wedding party. They attended a wedding simply because of their relationship with Jesus. When you pray, pray as I do. Abba, Papa, Dad. And you are in touch with the God of this universe. Well, the disciples learned how to pray that day. They prayed as their master prayed. But that's not the end of the story. Because I said, around the world this day, that same prayer is being prayed. It's not the end of the story. And so Paul, writing to the church at Rome in the mid-50s, some 25 years after the life of Jesus, Paul reminds the Christians at Rome, you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. And now all of a sudden, it's not just a closed-knit, intimate prayer between Jesus and 12 men. All of a sudden, Paul reminds us that if we have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, in the 21st century, we can pray as he prayed. And we can say, Abba, Father. And so, my, um, my few remarks this morning have this simple purpose in mind. Do you have that warm personal relationship with Jesus? Do you know him in a personal way? In the words of the hymn, does he walk with you and talk with you and tell you that you are his own? I'm not asking, do you have some theoretical knowledge of God and of Jesus of Nazareth, I'm asking, do you have at the intimate, personal level, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? If you do, celebrate it. If you don't, there's no better time than Father's Day, 21st century, June the 16th, of establishing that relationship with God. When you pray, say, Father, Abba, Papa, Dad. I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then Mike is going to lead us in our concluding singing. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for every blessing of life. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of the sanctuary this day. But most of all, we thank you for the knowledge of a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. He really does 
walk with us and talks to us and tells us we are his own. Thank you for the truth of this reality this day. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. this worship service to a conclusion this morning would you join me in praying our Lord's Prayer our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen have a great day